We're going to have a look at how to solve percentage of amount questions. Now before we get started, it's important to understand what percentage is. Now percent just means per 100. So if you were to be given a percentage of 21%, you can just imagine it as 21 parts per 100. And it can be written as a fraction as so. 21% is the same as 21 parts, the numerator, per 100, the denominator. And that's something to bear in mind as we look at how to solve percentage of amount questions. So now we know what percentage means and how to translate it into a fraction, it becomes quite clear that we can just divide by the denominator, 100 equal parts, to get an answer, and then multiply that answer by your numerator, in this case 21, and that would give you the answer to the question. So 21% of 2000, if we divide by 100, we get 20, and then we multiply by 21, some quick Mental arithmetic in this case would get me to the answer of 420. So we can safely say that 21% of 2000 is 420. So that's method one. Simply divide by 100 and then multiply by the percentage you're trying to find. Now if there are decimals involved, don't worry about it, your answer will still turn out correctly. Method one is an old tried and tested method of getting the right answer for percentage of amount questions. But in the real world, children sometimes struggle with dividing by 100 and times by a two digit number. So there is a method two that we like to use and it's more conceptual and it really gets to the bottom of what percentage actually is. And what it is, is building a toolbox. Let's have a look at a worked example using this method. Now, the first thing I'd always write down is 100% and put down my whole in this case 2,500. It just reinforces that I know 100% is my whole, my entire number. Now I've got 100%, what I also want to do is a related fact, and I'm going to now work out what 10% must be. So to find 10%, 10 parts per 100, I'm going to divide my whole by 10. In this case, it gives me an answer of 250. And then finally, my last related fact for now will be 1%, and I divide by 10 again, and I get the answer 25. So now I have 10 and 1%, I could figure out any combination to get any percentage of amount question that I'm given. In this example, I have 34%. 34% is made up of three lots of 10% and four lots of 1%. Now using my toolbox I created earlier, I can do some multiplications. I can do three multiplied by 250 is 750. Four multiplied by 25 is 100. Combine both answers, and now I know that 34% of 2,500 equals 850. Now I've got another question here, which is quite similar to one we just did, but I've changed the percentage required. So this time, I've still got 2,500 as my whole, but I want to know what 51% of that number is. Now we could go through the old method, five lots of 10%, add on the 1%, and get our answer, but there's lots of steps involved, and we're always looking for shortcuts. So if I'm thinking of 51% of 2,500, there's actually a much quicker way to get this answer, and that is to find out what 50% is. Now, understanding that 50% is the same as a half, we can half 2,500 and get 1,250. Now all I need to do is combine 50% and 1%, and I know that the answer must be 1,275. Really quick, really easy. We've got one more question here using 2,500 as our whole, and that is 24% of that number. Now you would be absolutely right in thinking that we could get two lots of 10%, four lots of 1% and combine the numbers to get our answer, but there is another quicker way. Now using these related facts going down here, I know 100%, I know 50%. The next logical step for me to take again is to half 50% and I can figure out 25%. In this case, 25% of our whole is 625. Now 25% is very close to 24%, and all we have to do to amend this number and get the right answer is to take off 1%. We've got that in our toolbox up here. 25% minus 1% gives us 24% as our answer, which in this case is 600. Now that we've had a look at both methods, we're going to apply them to the same question and see which one works best for us. Now you might notice something a bit different about this one. It has a multiplication sign in the middle. Don't worry about that, it just means the same as of. So you're still finding 76% in this case of 160. Method one, we find 1% by dividing by 100 
and we get 1.6. Then we take that 1%, 1 part per 100, and multiply it by 76 to find 76%. So we have 76 multiplied by 1.6. Now, we set it out as long multiplication. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42. Remainder 3 is 45. Put your decimal point in. Placeholder, decimal point, and then 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 7 is 7. Add these up, put your decimal place in, and you get an answer of 121.6. Nice, quick, easy answer if you know your multiplication super well. Now, if you're not secure on multiplication, this is a minefield for getting an answer wrong somewhere along the way. So let's have a look at method two and see if that's any easier for us. So looking at this question, 76%, my mind should be thinking, how can I get up to 76% using what I know I have in my toolbox? Straight away I'm thinking 50% and 25%, which get me up to 75%, and I've got just 1% left over. So those are the three parts that I'm going to figure out and combine. 50% is half, so half of 160 is 80. 25% is half of 50% again, which is 40. And I know that 1% I just divide by 100. So 1% 1 of 160 is 1.6. So to find 76%, I add these three numbers together, and hey presto, I get 121.6. Two methods, two identical answers. Which one will work best for you? We hope you enjoyed our introduction to finding percentages of amounts. These are just two of many methods out there and we really hope that they helped you. If you want any further practice, have a look at these questions coming up and give us a comment of your answer and how you got there.